This video will show the typical procedures for installing a solenoid valve. For today's purposes, we'll be using an ASCO 8262H208 quarter inch valve, and, uh, but the procedures will be the same for any other valve as well. The first thing that needs to be said about a new installation is that your lines need to be clean. We don't see many problems with the installation of ASCO valves, but by far most problems we do see are a result of dirt, debris, Teflon tape being in the lines and getting into the valve and, and plugging it up. One simple thing that you can do to eliminate that problem would be to install a, a strainer in the line uh, such as this, or you can put a filter uh, like this. ASCO makes both of these. A second problem that we see uh, often is the valves being hooked up backwards. Uh, you may notice on this valve, this is a two-way valve, it has an arrow uh, showing the direction of the flow. Now, uh, this is a two-way valve, you have an in port and an out port. That, uh, and, but a two-way valve can only control the flow of media in one direction, in one direction only. If you have pressure coming back from this direction, it will lift the, the, uh, the core up and just allow flow to, to come on all the way back. Uh, on other valves, uh, such as this one, there's an arrow here for the outlet showing the, the direction of flow, but the, uh, it's also marked on the inlet port uh, right here. On a freeway valve, you may see uh, the pressure port marked with a P, the exhaust port marked with an E, and the, your uh, line or your load are marked with an A. If it's a four-way valve, there would be an A and a B. On another uh, three-way valve, they would be marked with uh, one, two, or three, and you have to refer to a manual to determine which direction the flow is going, which one is the pressure port, if it's a universal uh, uh, valve especially. But whatever uh, the, uh, the valve, however it's marked, you do need to pay attention to the direction that it's hooked up. Now many of ASCO's valves can be mounted in any direction. That means they can be mounted in a horizontal pipe or in a vertical pipe uh, coming this direction. You can never mount a, a valve upside down. Uh, anytime you have flow coming through the valve, sediment will settle in the lowest point. Uh, it gets down in the core tube and it will uh, uh, shorten the life of the valve. Some valves be mounted, can be mounted only in an upright position like this valve. Uh, when it is, it uh, will be labeled to be mounted upright and vertical only. Now another thing you need to remember uh, when you go to install the valve, uh, if you choose to take the coil off for the installation, be sure to keep all of the parts. There will be a spring that goes under the valve. You need to hang on to that. That needs to uh, be there uh, to keep tension on the coil uh, when it uh, goes into place. On the Red Hat 2 valves, which is what this is, it's got a coil and the housing is all in one molded piece. It's called Red Hat 2. The nameplate is what holds it on. If you lose that nameplate, you've got a problem because you, you, the uh, red cap that goes on the top of it is only decorative. All it does is sit there and look red, it will not hold the coil on the valve. On the older style uh, valves, uh, such as this, which is, uh, these are still made, this is called the, this is the original Red Hat valve. The red cap here locks the, the can and the coil into place. So the, the red cap is replaceable, that's what holds it together on the older style. When you're ready to begin your installation, you want to prepare the pipe, putting the uh, Teflon tape on the pipe and wrapping it in the direction that you're going to screw your valve on. You don't need much, just a, just a couple of wraps, but be sure that uh, you do not get the tape over the end of the pipe. That's where the, the tape will get into the valve and uh, cause problems. To begin the uh, installation, uh, pretend the flow is going that way. This is going to be the outlet side. Start, the, start this by hand. 
And once it begins to, to tighten down like that, I'm going to use a wrench on it. Do not use this as your lever to, uh, to turn the valve. If you warp this, uh, it will uh, uh, cause the, the valve to be inoperable. So do not use this as your handle to, to operate, to, to tighten it. Always use a wrench with flats on it. Don't use a pipe wrench. Use a pipe wrench on the pipe. Use the... Uh, Use a wrench with flats on the valve. Bring it around to an upright position. So, uh, very neat, uh, and all it just takes just a little bit of tape. If you use the uh, liquid or the paste uh, seal joint, do not put it into the end of the valve. Do not put it in the in the threads right there. What happens there is the when you screw in the the pipe in, it pushes that dope back up into the valve. It'll get up there and gum it up. So always put your uh, your uh, sealant on the pipe and not on the valve. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pretend that we've piped it up uh, on both ends here. We're ready for uh, final installation. Going to put the spring back on. Put the coil back on. Put the uh, nameplate into place. Depress that a little bit. Slide it in so it locks. And then just to keep it cute, we'll put the red cap back on it. Uh, here again, remember that red cap doesn't do anything but sit there and look red. But uh, after you put the coil on, then you can wire it up and you're done.